it's it's like a field of dreams. If you build it, they will come, but it's just a dream that's never gonna become a reality. Part of the problem is that Jerry is looking for something to say, I did this. My inclination is not to spend a thing. But on the other hand, I like trains. <laughs> You may have heard of California's high-speed rail, the $68 billion project that's supposed to bring the state's transportation system into the 21st century. California hopes to connect San Francisco and Los Angeles with America's first true high-speed rail. 520 miles between them, travel time, three hours. The project, which is the brainchild of Governor Jerry Brown, has gotten plenty of criticism from both the left and the right for being a waste of time and money. The real issue in California is not getting from San Francisco to LA. The, the roads work fine. It's only when you get into the area, there are lots of flights. So you're really just essentially replacing Southwest with a much more expensive, slower system that costs lots of public money. Construction is already over budget and behind schedule. Many question if the state has the financial resources to complete the project. Despite these hurdles, Jerry Brown and High Speed Rail supporters are moving forward and ramping up efforts to secure land for the train through the use of eminent domain. The rail representatives in certain instances are definitely uh, sort of applying uh, pressure tactics to the landowners. That's Ray Carlson, a property lawyer in the Central Valley that's representing landowners who claim the high-speed rail is abusing their property rights through the use of flash appraisals and other shady practices. Some of these appraisals they didn't even know were being made. They just ended up on their doorstep one day. Alyssa Gomez is one of the people who's had problems with the land appraisal process. She's a high school teacher in Corcoran, California, whose living room is directly in the path of the train. They told us to call them when we were ready for the appraisal or to set up an appointment. Um, probably about a week later, there were appraisers walking up and down the road and it had caught my husband at lunchtime. Um, wanted to do the appraisal right then and there. Alyssa and her husband rushed home from work to do the appraisal and emailed follow-up questions to the appraiser never to hear back. Alyssa then says officials began contacting her ex-husband about her property. I don't understand, you know, why they were contacting him. A little bit of an invasion of privacy. Um, and so open the appraisals up. Multiple mistakes. My name is misspelled, spelled right here, misspelled in another area looked at properties that were less bedrooms, less square footage, run down, and it, it was just, it was a smack in the face offer. In another part of town, Jerry and Mary Jane Fagundis are fighting to keep the home they built over 30 years ago. The train will run 80 feet from their front door, causing severe vibration and noise. But because it technically doesn't touch their property line, the rail authority won't even deal with them. We really can't do nothing until they build the train because they're not impacting us, but Talking to a lawyer, we do have to get involved right now with a letter to state our impacts. And it's called inverse condemnation. To where they make our property really worthless without paying us a dime for it because of the influence of their project. It's just frustrating. It's, you know, and we've been in this since January of 11. And uh, what have they built? What, what have they acquired, really, I mean, well, by what, what they're supposed to be? What have they be? accomplished? If it's still at a 15% build, they still don't have any more money than they had four years ago when we started this fight with them. They still don't have answers. We still don't have answers. People all up and down the alignment have gone to, to public comment and asked the questions, and they're supposed to answer them. Some of the, A lot of it, they say, is in their environmental impact report. Yes, some, but most, no. So there's still all kinds of questions out there that are still floating around four years later and still haven't been answered. The shoddy way in which the rail authority is conducting some appraisals is not inspiring much confidence in residents that the state can get the actual construction of the 200 mile per hour train right. It seems to be herky-jerky. I don't think there's good uh, coordination within the high-speed rail structure. You ask a point person a question, and they can't give you an answer, and they say they'll, they'll give you one later, and then you never hear from them again. But the rail authority has outright dismissed the fears of property owners who think they're being taken for a ride. But we're building this, and it's time, I think, for people to come together to talk about how we're going to build it in the most effective way. 
And, and I've just been shocked that a number of leaders in the Central Valley uh, continue to want to raise what I think are spurious, specious issues. It's clear that the project has serious flaws, with so many questioning the wisdom of spending billions on a rail system instead of funding other urgent state needs. Why does the leadership in Sacramento insist on moving forward? Jerry, you know, had a problem with his father's legacy all along. His father was the one who built the modern California, you know, the freeway systems, the aqueducts. He was the, the university system, the, the state colleges. So really a lot of it is the legacy of Pat Brown. I think Jerry grew up in opposition to that legacy. And then he's trying to figure out, okay, what's my legacy? Jerry Brown's daddy issues could result in the largest land grab in modern history. Thousands of Californians along the alignment are in danger of losing their property, and it could take years for all the eminent domain cases to make their way through court. All this for a project that may never be completed. The timetable keeps getting pushed back. The money issue hasn't gone away. We keep being told that foreign investors are interested, but we've never told who they are. From the point of view of people here, it's like, uh, it's kind of, the, kind of the issue is, is, is this real? You know, is it really going to happen? People will look at this and say, well, okay, do we pay the pension or do we do this? Do we build a water system or do we do this? I mean, in other words, the choices are going to have to start to be made. And while those choices are being made, property owners will continue to fight for their rights. I think they probably started here because this is somewhere that is very simple and yeah, maybe they thought that maybe we were ignorant to, you know, what they were doing. But that's definitely not the case. There's some people that, that really care about their property and the people around them. Um, and they do the research and, and they're going to make sure that, that they're held accountable. Mm -hmm.